when we're thinking about the 1950s, what is it that you think of first, right? What pops into your head? Uh, my guess is it's it's rock and roll and it's cars and, and poodle skirts and all those images that we've uh, gotten in our heads from the popular culture. If you think of movies like Grease, you know, um, even uh, Back to the Future, this idea of, you know, Marty McFly goes back to the 1950s and that's a, you know, big portrayal of what that, that era is. Uh, there's other movies like Pleasantville. Uh, if you've not seen that, it's, it's a good one. It's kind of fun. Uh, and there's a really classic movie from the 1970s about the 1950s called American Graffiti, uh, which has a very young Harrison Ford in it, among other stars of the day, uh, just in their very youth. Uh, Ron Howard is in it. Uh, and that film actually uh, spawns off uh, the television series Happy Days. Uh, so when there's there's a lot of portrayals, a lot of nostalgic portrayals of the 1950s, but those popular culture ideas of music and cars and uh, teenagers, uh, we see the invention of the teenager in the 1950s, which sounds kind of strange, but I promise I'll explain. Uh, so when we think about the 1950s, we've got all these images in our head already. Um, all of these things are possible because we have this incredible post-war prosperity. Uh, we've come out of World War II, and the United States is doing very well. Uh, the rest of the world is devastated. Uh, you know, millions of people are, are dead. Uh, their cities have been, cities of Europe and Asia have been flattened, uh, and the United States comes away from the war relatively unscathed. We've lost about 400,000 uh, men uh, in, in the conflict, 400,000 uh, uh, people during the war. Uh, but we're able to take those post-war industries, uh, those factories that were building, building tanks and trucks and planes and helping the United States grow uh, for the war effort, all of a sudden we're, we're able to shift those um, into consumer goods, into washers and dryers and uh, uh, anything that you can imagine uh, was being built in the United States. So we have this incredible amount of post-war prosperity. There's a number of, um, I just want to show you some of the, the um, overall numbers just, just to give you an idea. For the United States, um, our gross national product, that's uh, the GNP is the total value of all the finished goods, right? So all the trucks and cars and, and boats and anything like that, uh, the, that finished value of those things, uh, we have incredible economic growth. So in 1945, our, our GNP, our gross national product, again, the, the total value of all those finished goods, and in 1945, that's going to include all that military equipment, the planes, the tanks, the trucks, all of those things. It was $106 billion. Which is a lot, which is, which is a, a very healthy economy, which is really comparatively uh, to the world in great shape. Uh, to give you an idea of what happens in the 1950s, kind of these long 50s, right, from the late 40s uh, to 1960. Uh, by 1960, our GNP is $600 billion, right, $600 billion. So think about this, this, this huge increase um, in a decade of, of peace. Right? in a decade of peace. So how does that happen and, and where does that come from? Uh, the United States by, by the 1950s is the wealthiest nation on earth. Uh, we consume one third of the world's goods and services, even though we're only 6% of the world's population. So this is a huge, huge shift uh, in the global economy uh, and a real growth in American power. Okay. So, so why, right? That's the big question. 